Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to a concert given by the men and women of the President's Own United States Marine Chamber Orchestra. It is so great to have you here. It's so great to have you with us. It's so great to be together making live music in person again. Hey, yes. So thank you for being here. To all the children, thank you so much for being with us. You are in for a treat tonight. We have found for you, I can't believe it, but we actually did. We found for you a real live composer. We did it, we found him, it's true, we did, we did. And you are in for a treat. As you may know, that uh, from Beethoven or Mozart or our very own John Philip Sousa, a composer is a person yeah, a composer is a person who writes or creates his or her own music. And we found one. We did. He was wandering the streets of D.C. He's from Chicago, Illinois, and we snatched him up and we brought him here and he has some music for you today. Would you like to meet him? Yeah. You would like to meet him? Excellent. Well, then, please help me welcome to the stage our narrator for Once Upon a Symphony, the one, the only, the real live composer, Mr. Jim Stevenson. I'm alive. I'm alive. <laughs> it's a miracle. It's a miracle. I'm alive. Once upon a time, in a land not too far away, there was a little girl named Sally. One evening, just before bed, Sally's parents told her that the next day, she would get to spend the day with her grandfather. She drifted off to sleep, and when she awoke, the sun was shining brightly, and there was grandfather. Where would you like to go? Anywhere. I want to do something amazing and experience something I've never done before. Wonderful. Come with me. And off they went, around a crooked corner, up this way, then down that, through a perfect circle, then behind a solid square. They jumped over big blue things and touched gooey green things. They felt warm yellow on their face and tasted raspberry red things, until finally they peered through some hanging branches, and much to Sally's surprise, they saw a symphony orchestra off in the distance. And furthermore, the musicians were surrounded by animals of all different shapes and sizes. Grandpa, this is amazing. Thank you. Would you like to hear them play? Yes, please. <laughs> I 
I've never heard anything like that before. But how do they do it? Well, first they have to learn to play a scale. That is the foundation of almost all music. And they actually just played one. Would you like to hear it again? Yes, please. Sally, being a curious and tricky little girl, had an idea. That was great, but can they play it backwards? I don't. Can I meet them, Grandpa? Well, of course, dear. They are people just like you and me. And as they walked toward the musicians, they found themselves in a lush field full of tall grasses and beautiful wildflowers. The wind was gently blowing across the field, causing the grasses to make a soft and soothing sound. In the distance, Sally began to hear a sound of a small group of the musicians playing their instruments together. And as they got closer, she noticed they were all playing beautiful music on their woodwind instruments. just playing by yourselves? The woodwinds replied, well, we are inspired by the way the tall grasses are dancing in the wind and wanted to play some music for the birds and other animals to dance to. Sally danced too, and was so mesmerized by the woodwind's music that she didn't even notice until afterward that some of the musicians had run off to play by themselves. Grandpa, where did they all go? Follow me. And so they were off, traversing a triangle, then over a rectangle. They crawled under orange things and poked at pink things. They felt cooler and darker yellow on their face and smelled pine in the air. Suddenly, they were in the thick forest with tall trees towering above their heads. The path was shaded and cool, and Sally now heard music that made her feel as if they had traveled back in time to a place where knights rode on horseback and kings ruled the land. <laughs> The brass instruments then started to play a type of music called jazz. All of a sudden, Sally saw more animals, big elephants, lions, and even little cows and lambs dancing to the jazz music. This is so fun! She couldn't believe what she was seeing. She told the brass players that they should go join the dancing woodwinds that she had just met. Is there more, Grandpa? I want to see more. Of course. They walked along the path while Sally kicked her feet through the fallen leaves. And the wind began to blow, 
and rain began to fall, and more leaves fell to the ground. And then one last leaf gently floated to the ground. Still in the forest, they came upon a lovely, cool stream. And as they walked along, they began to hear music that sounded just like the water flowing past. It was another group of musicians making beautiful music, the strings. Much to their delight, the stream was full of feisty fish who were flipping their fins and making small splashes at the top of the water. The string instruments mimicked them, using their fingers to sound like the fish with a method called pizzicato. The violin, being the smallest instrument, suddenly played as a little fish jumped clear out of the water. Grandpa, can you tell me more about these beautiful instruments? I'd be delighted, Sally. All of the string instruments use a bow to make a sound. The bow is made of wood and is strung with horse hair. <laughs> The violin, being the smallest, often gets to play the melody. While listening, Sally can't help but think that the melody sounded a lot like water moving swiftly over the rocks. You see that young bear playing in the stream? Sally actually hadn't seen it, but was now even more excited. You might think of that young bear as a viola, which is slightly larger than the violin and gets to play its own melody. <laughs> and do you see that bigger bear sitting comfortably in the water. Sally nodded, now fully engrossed. Well, that one is like the cello. The cellist has to sit down while playing instead of putting the instrument under their chin like the violin or the viola. <laughs> it's just too big, which means it can play lower notes, as you'll hear now. And look over there, back behind the other bears, watching over the rest of them. That's the biggest bear of them all, just like the string bass. Some say it's the granddaddy of all the strings. <laughs> just like you, Grandpa. <laughs> yes, just like me. <laughs> Grandpa's face started to show a little bit of puzzlement, and Sally watched in amazement as the string players happily bowed and plucked their strings. She also noticed that they used their left hands to change the notes.
Suddenly, Sally, Grandpa, and all of the brass players and string players were beckoned back to the meadow by the sound like that of a bird. They all rambled through rhombuses and pranced past pentagons. They skipped around gray things and prodded purple things. The orange glowed on their face, and green grasses again grabbed at their ankles as they hurried along. Grandpa, what makes that bird sound? That, my dear, is the flute. The flute plays the highest sounds of all the woodwind instruments. They blow their air across the top of a hole on the mouthpiece, just like when you blow air across the top of a bottle. Oh, I've definitely done that. Hey, did you say something about bottles? You know, we happen to have some bottles here. Maybe we could play the bottles and, and the flute can play the melody. Next to the flute is the oboe. It's made of wood and is played differently than the flute. They use a double reed, which vibrates when they blow into it and sounds like this. <laughs> but when the oboe player puts the reed back into the instrument, it creates a much more beautiful sound like this. that music. That's what they'd use to charm a snake. <laughs> she jumped up and down in all of her excitement and caused a kaleidoscope of butterflies to fly out of their resting places. And in response, this was imitated by the clarinet. Oh, the clarinet only uses a single reed, also made from bamboo. When air passes over the reed, it vibrates and produces a whimsical sound. I suppose it's time for the grandpa of the woodwinds, the bassoon. A double reed instrument, just like the oboe, it is the lowest instrument in the woodwind family. Well, that didn't sound very low. Much better. <laughs> But it can do more, Sally. The bassoon can play very lyrical melodies, or it can imitate a grasshopper in the meadow and play a bouncy tune.
Can they play all together again, Grandpa? But Grandpa didn't answer right away. He seemed worried about something, glancing to the left and then to the right as if he was looking for something. Grandpa? Grandpa! Uh, yes, Sally, no need to yell at me. Sure. Let's listen as the rest of the woodwinds join in with the bassoon. You can even pay attention to their fingers on the keys and how they blow into or across their instruments to make a sound. from the forest who sound like knights and kings and hunters and elephants and lions right and- Right you are, Sally. First, the trumpet, who plays the highest notes of the brass family and uses vowels to play many different notes. Sally, maybe you can imagine a knight riding off into battle. Can the trumpet play anything a little more fun? Well, uh, there's the higher, brighter sounding piccolo trumpet. I like to think of it uh, as sounding like a toy trumpet. Grandpa, look at those instruments over there. They look like coiled up garden hoses. Ah, yeah, exactly. It's called a French horn, and its brass tubing is all wound up tight. Secondly, they use their hand to change the sound of the instrument. But listen to what happens when the hand is jammed too far into the bell of the instrument. I think that garden hose got a little crimped up, Grandpa. <laughs> well, it's just an effect they use sometimes. The French horn is neither the highest nor the lowest instrument in the brass family. It usually gets pretty melodies to play. Sally, do you remember earlier how we saw the brass players in the forest? Yes, I do. Well, I think the French horn was about to signal for the beginning of the hunt. Listen carefully. Players sure can make some silly sounds. That is the trombone. It is a very special brass instrument for sure. It does not use vowels, but instead uses a slide to change from one note to another. And yes, it can also make a wide variety of noises using its slide. That one you just heard is called the glissando. Or it could sound like a little cow. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> or, or, or perhaps an elephant. <laughs> Can a trombone sound like someone laughing? <laughs> Wait for this one, Sally. This is my personal favorite. The vacuum cleaner. <laughs> now, Sally, close your eyes. And I want you to imagine a scene in a castle from long, long ago where a prince and princess join in a courtly dance. And let's listen to this regal little tune. Sally looked up at Grandpa, who again seemed confused and really worried about something. What's wrong, Grandpa? Oh, it's nothing, Sally. I just can't seem to find someone. It seems like something is missing. But never mind, never mind. Would you like to meet the tuba, the biggest and boldest of all the brass instruments? It is the king, or perhaps the lion, of the brass instruments. You mean the grand paw. <laughs> Whatever you say, dear. Because it's the biggest, it's the lowest. But sometimes tuba players seem to think they can play just as high as the trumpet. What do you think, Sally? Oh, I don't know, Grandpa. Can they have a duel? Ooh, excellent idea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like these challenges. Let's see. Do you think the horn player can play as low as the tuba? <laughs> And the winner is... The Tuba! <laughs> Sally, I'll bet you recognize this very famous solo by the Tuba. Everybody else got to play a melody except me. I just had to play the bass line the whole time. I want a chance to play a melody. Well, since you are the king, I mean the grandpa of the brass instruments, what do you say we let him play the tune? <laughs> Are they just 
blowing air into their instruments? How do they actually get a sound? No, no, Sally, you see, they have to buzz their lips into the mouthpiece. Listen. <laughs> wow, they sound like bumblebees. <laughs> Sally, do you remember how earlier we noticed that the French horn looks like a coiled up garden hose? <laughs> you sure do. Well, the brass players found some things in a nearby garden, and they're going to play a final piece for you on their <laughs> garden hoses. Suddenly, out of nowhere, hurtling hexagonal things and bouncing off of brown things, a harp rushed in like a gust of wind. The harp player had heard that some friends were gathering and asked to join them in playing some music. I use eight of my fingers to pluck the strings and my two feet to change the pedals at the bottom of the harp. Oh, you are very busy. Is this who you were looking for, Grandpa, the harp? Grandpa? Grandpa? But Grandpa was nowhere to be seen. He had gone away. Hey, I'm sleepy, roared the lion. Me too, cried the caterpillar. I want a nap, sang the bird. The musicians and the animals were feeling very sleepy. And the harp player agreed to play some soothing music. I can help with that. Let me play some music. Suddenly, just like that, Grandpa was returning. Sally could see him skipping down the path, laughing and obviously quite relieved from his earlier stress. And he was not alone. He had someone else with him who was pushing a cart filled with all sorts of jangly things, clangy things, and rat-a-tat-tat -tat things. Oh, thank goodness, Grandpa, I was so worried about you. Oh. Sally, I didn't mean to worry you, dear. I, I, I thought we'd lost our percussionist, but I found him. You see, I was so worried we'd never find the beat again. But now we have our rhythm back. 
Sally invited the percussionist to join the group, but she was puzzled. How do you play all of these instruments? Well, I usually just play one at a time, like this. Wow, can you do that a little slower, perhaps? Of course. Okay, what else can you do? You see, with percussion, we either have to scrape, shake, or strike our instruments to make a sound. So when I hear the marching band, that's you that provides the beat? That's right. Or a jazz band? Of course. What about when I watch cartoons and movies, all those weird sounds? Hold my root beer. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, maybe since you brought all of these instruments, you'd like to join the rest of our musicians in our orchestra. I'd love to. letting me getting, get to know all of the instruments in this orchestra. Thank you for taking me on this journey. Oh, you're so welcome, Sally. But our journey isn't over yet. No? No. It's time for you to compose your own piece of music, Sally. Why, that's why I've gotten all of these instruments together for you. No, I can't write my own music. Sure you can. Anyone can. All you have to do is to be willing to try, and people will help you. Our musicians will help you, starting with some melody, and then adding some harmony, and then rhythm. But, 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 Sally, I think we should also ask our audience to join in. Let's get four volunteers, four, and we'll all compose a piece together. Have you ever been this close to an orchestra before? What do you think? You, you have, all right. You actually play in an orchestra. Do we have a seat available somewhere for... Look, you can look at them, see how smiley they are and friendly. They wave to you. Yeah, look at that. Orchestra all up close. All right. I tell you what. All of our young composers here, I have a question. Will you tell me your name, please? My name is Clara. This is Clara. Okay, so you've composed music before, right? No? You had your hand up? No, it's all good. We're, we're going to do this together. We're going to compose a brand new piece of music right here on the spot, Clara, okay? So I'm going to ask you a big favor. I'm going to ask you to listen as they play three melodies, the tune. And all you have to do, you can close your eyes, you can watch them, you can even walk around if you want, and you can pick your favorite melody of the three, okay, Clara? All right, so here's our first melody, melody number one. What do you think? Huh? Oh, okay. Eh, okay. Well, then let's try another one. Here's our second melody. Huh? 
How are we doing so far? You think about it? Okay, that's good. Well, you always want to get three bids whenever you pick something. So let's try our third melody and see if you like this one, Clara. Okay, so we composers always have to pick our melodies. So which is your favorite of those three? I like the one that you just played. The one we just did, number three? All right, she liked our third melody. All right, if you don't mind standing right over here, because I'll have more work for you in a little bit. All right. Hi there. Oh, you even have a, a sticker that says President's Own. What's your name? Gabriel. Gabriel. All right, Gabriel, I'll tell you what. So we have Clara's melody. And now we're going to add some more notes to it. We're going to add supporting notes that are going to change how Clara's melody sounds entirely. And our first one, well, what kind of mood are you in today? Are you in a happy mood? Sad um, mood? I don't know. Yeah, that's good. That's what happens when we write music. We have to see what kind of mood we're in. So we're going to play this first one for you. It's kind of in a happy mood kind of thing. Let's see what our first harmony sounds like. So that's still Clara's melody, but we added all that harmony. Would you like to hear another one? Mm -hmm. All right, so this one might be what it sounds like when it's cloudy or maybe we're in a sad mood. This is in a minor key. Let's have our second harmony. You can, maybe you can hear it's a little different. Okay, you wanna try one more? All right, this one we call, you know, sometimes composers like to add funny little notes here and there to make the sound music, the music sound jazzy or dissonant, it's a fancy word. So let's try our third harmony and see if you like this one. Okay, Gabriel, do you have a favorite of those three? I think I liked the um, last one. You liked the last one, okay. You're feeling a little, yeah, I get that, I get that, all right. So why don't you go next to Clara over here? We got some more work for you to do in a little bit. All right, let's, uh, let's go over here. What's your name? Uh, my name is Oliver. Oliver, Oliver, okay, so we've had melody, we've had harmony, we're missing something. We're missing something that gives the music a beat. He hasn't played yet over there. Are you bored back there? Yeah, we need to give them something to do. Yeah, so we're gonna play three rhythms for you. The first one is gonna be a waltz. You probably know what a waltz is. Maybe you've seen Princess and Prince dancing in a ballroom in a Disney movie or something like that. And we're gonna see how Clara's melody and Gabriel's harmony sound played as a waltz. All right, what do you think of that one? It's okay? It's always good to have more options, I think. Always, always good, to, you know, I like that. All right, so let's have some more options. Now let's try it, something that the Marine Band does very, Marine Orchestra does very well. This is a march, all right? All right, now our third option is a tango. You know what a tango is? Yes, All right, he knows what a tango is. Let's hear what it sounds like, Oliver, as a tango. The 
the March, I think, was the best. The March. March Madness. All right. <laughs> the March. Good choice. See how much he liked that one? Okay, so let me think here. Why did we bring... You know what? Since you're all here, I have an idea. Stay right there, okay? I'll be right back. Brought some toys with me. You might remember earlier, we talked about how on a percussion instrument, they either shake, scrape, what's the other one? Or strike their instruments to get a sound. So, let's see here. What's your name? Asher. Asher? Mm -hmm. All right, Asher, if you were a percussionist and you wanted to make a sound, what might you do with these two things? Scrape it? Yeah, scrape it. All right, let's give it a good scrape there. Oh, you can do louder than that. Use all of it. Let's see your strength. There we go. All right, we got our, streak, our uh, scraping instrument. Hmm. Okay. Uh, let's go back over to Clara. If you had these, you can put it on the floor. Yeah, good. All right, what would you do with these to make a sound? You can have that. You can have that. What do you think? Your job, your job is in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that's a striking instrument. So we have scrape, strike. What else do we need? Hmm, you want, you want to take that? Shake. Shake, very good. All right, hold on. We got that. Here you go. Would you hold on to those for me? You can put your tickets down. That's all right. And what, do you, what would maybe shake that or do whatever you want with it? Nice and loud. Yes, okay. Uh, wait a minute. Uh-oh, we need something for you to do. Yes, do. What should we... <laughs> what's, what's your name? Bianca. Bianca. Do you have any ideas for what she might do? Oh, 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 ho, ho, ho. So, I tell you what, while he's working with Bianca, let's all turn around and face our parents, our audience. See how friendly they all look? They wave too, look at that, see that? All right, so this piece of music has never been heard before. This is a world premiere. Maybe we'll add it to the Marine March Club or something like that. All right, so let's get our percussionists going. Let's strike first, maybe we go one, two, one, two. Strike it nice and loud. All right, keep going, keep going. Yeah, now you scrape along with that. And you can shake. Nice and loud, shake. And we have our conductor ready to go. All right, here's our world premiere. Keep going. <laughs> Let's take a bravo. You want to come up here? We'll take a bow. Everybody, take a bow. Yeah. Thank you all so much. You can put your percussion instruments back in the big bucket there and head carefully back to your seats. Thank you all so much. We have five more composers. Now I have to worry about my job. Thank you. Let's give him another round of applause. Thank you. <laughs> Sally was so excited at the new piece of music she created, and in learning all of the options that composers had when writing music, she never would have imagined that that was what Grandpa had in mind when he took her on that journey. She turned around to go give him a big hug, but, but he was gone, again. She started to get worried, wondering who was still missing, and she began to run to look for him, darting around a crooked corner, up this way, then down that. 
She went through a perfect circle and touched gooey green things. She tasted raspberry red things and started to feel a warm yellow glow on her face. And then suddenly, the sun was shining very brightly. She squinted, squirmed, and finally squeezed open her eyes. And there, standing next to her, were her parents. Good morning, Sally. You look like you've had quite the night. What do you want to do today? I want to see something amazing and experience something I've never done before. Thank you all for coming. Find a way to keep music in your life. <laughs>